Hello and welcome, dear students. Today, we are going to nourish your minds with essential information to improve your mathematical skills. Be ready with your paper and pen as we share another interesting lesson in general mathematics. Are you ready? Let's begin. At the end of the session, you are expected to determine the zeros and determine the y-intercept of rational functions. Let's jump into our main topic for this video presentation, and that is the zeros and y-intercepts of rational functions. How do we define each? Zeros are the values of x which make the function zero. The real number zeros are also the x-intercepts of the graph of the given function. For example, look at this graph. The zero or the x-intercept of this function is this. At this point, when x is equal to 2, in this example, this will make the function equal to 0. So that is your x-intercept. How about your y-intercept? It is defined as the function value when the value of x is equal to 0. Let's look at this. In this example, the y-intercept is at this point. Here, this is the value of the given function when x is equal to 0. So that is our y-intercept. Let's understand more as we look at some examples. Given f of x is equal to x minus 3 over x plus 3, find the x and y intercepts. You may pause this video and take your time in answering. Go ahead, pause the video. Alright, now to solve for this, let's be guided with these steps. Since the zeros or x-intercept of a rational function are values of x that will make the function zero, a rational function will be zero if its numerator is zero. Therefore, the zeros of a rational function are the zeros of the numerator. So step one, we will equate the numerator to zero. So we will take the numerator x minus 3 and equate that to 0. So we have your x minus 3 is equal to 0. Right after that, we'll proceed with step 2. Here, step 2 is we will solve for the value of x. So let's use addition property of equality and let's add 3 to both sides of our equation like this. So it will give us x is equal to positive 3. Here, the answer is x is equal to positive 3 and that is already our 0 or the x-intercept of the given rational function. So how about the y-intercept? To find it, we'll have step 1. Step 1 is we'll substitute x with 0. So based on the given rational function, we will substitute x right here with 0. It would look like this. We have 0 minus 3 and we have 0 plus 3. Step 2. We will do the indicated operation. So we have 0 minus 3 which will give us a negative 3 and a 0 plus 3 in the denominator will give us a positive 3. So we'll have this. Performing the indicated operation, let's divide negative 3 by positive 3. The result will be f of 0 is equal to negative 1. And this is now our y-intercept. Looking at the graph of the given rational function, we have the 0 or the x-intercept and the y-intercept with these values. x is equal to 3 as the x-intercept, 
and y or f of x is equal to negative 1 as our y-intercept. So based on the graph, we can see that somewhere here. Let's zoom that in. There you go. And our x-intercept, x is equal to 3, is at this point, there. And our y-intercept is right over here. That's y or f of x is equal to negative 1. So those are our values for the x and the y-intercept of this rational function. So I believe you are now ready in trying another item in finding the zero or the x-intercept and the y-intercept of a rational function. So let's do this. Given f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 1, let's all find the x and the y-intercepts. You may pause this video and take your time in answering. You may recall the steps in the previous example. Go ahead. Are you done? So let's show the solutions. We will take the numerator and equate that to zero. So here our numerator is x squared minus 3x plus 2, so let's take that out and equate that to 0, like this. To find x, let's check this polynomial. Since it's factorable, let's write it in this form. We have it as x minus 2 multiplied to the quantity of x minus 1 equal to 0. Because the factors of this trinomial is x minus 2 and x minus 1. Let's equate both factors to 0. So we have x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. Let's solve for the first one. x minus 2 is equal to 0. So let's take the parentheses out. We'll have x minus 2 is equal to 0. To solve for x, let's add 2 to both sides of our equation, like this. It will cancel out 2 and negative 2, which will lead us to x is equal to positive 2. How about on the other side? We will take first the parentheses. We'll have x minus 1 is equal to 0. Add 1 to both sides of our equation, like this. And it will give us an answer of x is equal to positive 1. So we have two answers. We have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. But wait, x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1 are not yet the final answers. When you go back to the original function, f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 1. When you substitute these values 2 and 1, let's confirm if it will make your function 0. So we have x is equal to 2. So when you have your 2 squared will give you a 4 minus 3 times 2, that's, that will be 6 plus 2. So we have 4 minus 6 plus 2 will give you a 0. In the denominator, let's check. We have x squared minus 1. So our value of x is again 2. So we have 2 squared, that will give us a 4 minus 1, that's over 3 right here. So it's 0 over 3. 0 divided by any number will give you a 0. So here, when x is equal to 2, the function is 0. So this one is correct. When the value of x is equal to 1, that will be x squared, that's 1 squared, which is 1, minus 3 times 1, that's 3, then we'll copy 2. So it's 1 minus 3 plus 2. And that will give us a 0 in our numerator. When you divide that to the denominator, let's see. We have your x squared minus 1. So 1 squared is 1. Minus 1 is also a 0. So we have your 0 over 0. 0 divided by any number is 0. But any number divided by 0 will make the function undefined. So this will make your function undefined. 
Hence, the value of x, which is equal to 1, is not an answer since it will make your function undefined. So the zero or the x-intercept of the rational function is x is equal to 2. How about the y-intercept? To solve for the y-intercept, let's substitute x to 0 for this given rational function. We'll have this. Performing the indicated operation, we'll have this. So we have 0 minus 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 1. It will lead us to positive 2 divided by negative 1. So our final answer for this when x is equal to 0 is f of 0 is equal to negative 2. So our y-intercept is negative 2 or y is equal to negative 2. So these are our answers. We have x is equal to 2 as our 0 or x-intercept and f of 0 or y is equal to negative 2 as our y-intercept. Looking at the graph of this rational function, we'll have this. This point at x is equal to 2 would be the 0 of our rational function. And at this point, that would be the y-intercept of this rational function. Are we good? Is everything clear? Hopefully your answer for that is a yes. Well, if not, no worries. You can always go back to the portion of this video showing you the step-by-step -step solution for the two examples for the zeros and two examples for the y-intercept. And at this point, let's have the activity time. I prepared an assessment for you to check your understanding for this lesson. What you need to do is to find the zeros and the y-intercepts of the given rational functions. So in the first column, you have here the given function. On the second column, you have here the zero or zeros. And on the last column is you're going to fill in the table with the y-intercepts of the rational function. So you can pause this video and take your time in answering. Or you can have a screenshot of this and answer it during your free or available time. Alright, so that's it. And that ends our lesson 1 for topic 3 about the zeros and the y-intercepts of rational functions. Great job for today. As always, and see you in the next lesson.